Hello hackers. I watched a video by Scotty from the Strange Parts YouTube channel uh, where he tried to turn a broken iPhone into a USB flash drive. He did this by removing the internal storage from the phone and attempting to read it in his PC. It's a fun video, uh, so watch it if you haven't. But this style of attack is something I often mention in pen test reports uh, when I'm testing mobile applications. For example, if I'm testing an application and I find that it stores passwords and the keys inside the sandbox in clear text, I'll say something like, an attacker with physical access to the device would be able to recover the data. Uh, but saying that, it's not actually an attack I've personally tried myself. So I wanted to see how difficult it would be and whether I'd be successful performing this attack with cheap-ish hardware, you know, stuff that is quite easy to get from Amazon. Um, I also wanted to document this one piece of kit that I got as there didn't seem to be many reviews um, or documentations online. So the first thing I did, I went to eBay and I found a listing um, of a load of old phones. Now I needed to find devices that uh, didn't use full disk encryption by default, so these were slightly older devices um, and they needed to be fairly cheap because no doubt I'd make several mistakes trying to uh, try, and try on this project. So I managed to find a load of Samsung Galaxy S3 motherboards. So I have a big you know, handful of all these motherboards from old broken Samsung Galaxy S3s. Now, according to some of the stickers on the uh, on the devices, they're in all uh, various different uh, issues. So for example, some of them have weak Wi-Fi um, or some have water damage that won't turn on. Either way, all we're really looking at is the eMMC chip on the on the motherboard. We want to see if we can remove that and read any data that might be stored on there. Now, on newer phones, these are going to use NAND chips, um, which are a bit more complex to recover data from. So the older phones in this case is actually um, makes a lot more sense. So let's see how that works. So I start by using a hot air gun to apply heat to the chip. This allows us to melt the solder that's holding the chip to the device uh, as well as the glue that's also there. We'll need to scrape off some of this glue as it starts to melt. As we're not planning on reusing the device, it doesn't really matter if we remove other components. Eventually, the chip can be removed. However, it does need to be cleaned. With our limited equipment, this isn't the best way to go about cleaning a chip, but it works. So we use a soldering iron uh, and some flux to almost scrape off all the remaining glue and solder that's on the chip. And now we can use a solvent to just clean off all the flux. And you can see our chip is significantly cleaner than before. So now we have some chips. The question is, how do we read them? So I picked up this device off Amazon. This is uh, an all sockets, Dr. Fix 6-in-1 eMMC adapter. And it comes in two parts. The first is the holder where we can actually place our chip. Well, I have one in here already. We need to make sure the chip is the correct way up. The chip has a little dot on the top left corner. We just need to make sure that matches with the arrow on the holder. So we can close this. And now we place this onto the board. As the chip inside here is the 153169 BGA chip, we line that up with the side that has the SD adapter. Now we just need to find a PC or laptop to plug this SD adapter in and assuming that 
we managed to remove the chip without destroying it, we should be able to read the data off the chip. I've plugged this into my laptop and we can see that the fast system of the chip can be read. I'm going to navigate to a test file. Let's go for the WPA supplicant file. This file contains a list of all the safe passwords for Wi-Fi networks that this device has connected to in the past. As we can see, there are plenty. What did I learn? Well, first I learned that this kind of attack isn't as difficult as it seems. With modest budget, it was possible to re remove those chips from the devices and quite easily read them. This is now another technique I can use in pen tests and security tests. If I'm looking at embedded systems or IoT devices, it might be easier for me to remove the chip, remove the storage and read it directly. I can then start to analyze any binaries looking for vulnerabilities or um, hard-coded passwords or hard-coded encryption keys. If you're watching this video and you don't use disk encryption, I would encourage you to. Had these devices been encrypted, I wouldn't have been able to read any sensitive data from them. If you're throwing away things like old phones and laptops uh, and tablets, you know, be aware that unless they are encrypted, an attacker might be able to recover any sensitive data that's stored on them. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks a lot for watching.